Happy Monday. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Well, whoever joins us bright yeah, and early in the morning. Right, right. Or you might be watching this later on. Yes. <laughs> so we're in Isaiah uh, 17 and 18. This is a prophecy uh, about Damascus, but actually morphs into a prophecy around about uh, the northern kingdom of Israel, Jacob. Yeah. But then also a prophecy against Cush. So we'll find out those. We're going to find All out. right, 17, Isaiah chapter 17 and 18. An oracle concerning Damascus. See, Damascus will no longer be a city. It will become a heap of ruins. The city of Aor will be deserted and left to flocks, which will lie down with no one to make them afraid. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim, the royal power from Damascus. The remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the Israelites, declares the Lord Almighty. In that day, the glory of Jacob will fade. The fat of his body will waste away. It will be as when a reaper gathers the standing grain and harvests the grain with his arm, as when a man gleans heads of grain in the valley of Rephaim. Yet when gleanings will remain as when an olive branch is beaten, leaving two or three olives on the topmost branches, four or five on the fruitful boughs, declares the Lord, the God of Israel. In that day, men will look to their maker and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will not look to the altars, the work of their hands, and they mm -hmm. will have no regard for the Asherah poles and the incense altars their fingers have made. In that day, their strong cities, which they left because of the Israelites, will be like places abandoned to thickets and undergrowth, and all will be desolation. You, you have forgotten God, your, so your Savior. You have not remembered the rock, your fortress. Therefore, though you set out the finest plants and plant imported vin vines, though on the day you set them out, you make them grow. And on the morning when you plant them, you bring them to bud. Yet the harvest will be as nothing in the day of disease and incurable pain. Oh, the raging of many nations. They rage like the raging sea. Oh, the uproar of the peoples. They roar like the roaring of great waters. Although the peoples roar like the roar of the surging waters, when he rebukes them, they flee far away, driven before the wind like chaff on the hills, like tumbleweed before a gale. In the evening, sudden terror. Before the morning, they are gone. This is the portion of those who loot us, the lot, the lot of those who plunder us. Mm. Chapter 18, a prophecy against Cush. Woe to the land of whirling, whirring wings along the rivers of Cush, which sends envoys by sea and papyrus boats over the water. Go swift, messengers, to a tall, a people tall and smooth-skinned, to a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nature, nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers. All you people of the world, you who live on the earth, when a banner is raised in the mountains, you will see it, and when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. This is what the Lord says to me. I will remain quiet and will look on from my dwelling place like shimmering heat in the sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of the harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is gone and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he will cut off the shoots with pruning knives and cut down and take away the spreading branches. They will all be left to the mountain, bir mountain birds of prey and to the wild animals. The birds will feed on them all summer and the wild animals all winter. At that time, gifts will be brought to the Lord Almighty from a people tall and smooth-skinned, from a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech whose land is divided by rivers. The gifts will be brought to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord Almighty. All right. Hmm. Let's pray. All right. God, as we uh, reflect on your word, we pray you would give us wisdom and insight into uh, what was going on then, but also how to apply that to our lives now. So uh, we pray we would heed your word and um, listen to it and be our lives be guided and directed by you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, so we'll start out with uh, Damascus, which, um, you know, in, is in modern day Syria. Uh, so just to the uh, kind of northeast of uh, of modern day Israel. And uh, so they were known as the, sometimes, it depends how the translation goes, sometimes the Arameans, it said Aram here, mm -hmm. um, 
sometimes Syrians, uh, depends on the translation. But anyway, so Damascus is going to be laid waste. And of course, this is going to happen by the Assyrians. The Assyrians mm -hmm. are going to come and they actually do uh, take out, um, take out uh, Damascus. Uh, so and, uh, I'm just kind of saying though what the date was on that. Um, uh, 732 BC, mm -hmm. Tiglath Pileser II mm. of Assyria takes out Damascus. But you see a transition at the end of verse 3. The remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the Israelites, declares the Lord Almighty. Hmm. So there's a transition now from Damascus to mm -hmm. Israel. And so verse 4 and following is kind of speaking mm -hmm. uh, prophecy against Israel. And it's using this description of a harvest and the you know as the harvest is done uh, maybe like off an olive tree or an olive tree is shaking and you're you're mm -hmm. you're taking the olives from the olive tree there's a few left and that's the description it's kind of like there's going to be destruction there'll be a few left mm -hmm. uh after after all of this so that's the picture that's being painted there um and verse 7 says, and 8, that people will give up their idols mm -hmm. because of this, this coming judgment that's coming mm -hmm. upon them. And that then, in that day, men will look to their maker and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. So they wake up. Yeah. Now, uh, I think it's kind of my, my experience in people's lives. When trouble comes in their lives, it can either drive them to their maker, drive them to God, or in some cases they turn further from God. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that probably happens here as, as well, but uh, there will be a people that will be turning to God and saying, we have done wrong, we have, uh, we have trusted in these idols, these idols didn't save us. Um, so this be like somebody who's trusting maybe in their wealth and then they get a diagnosis that's a terrible diagnosis and they realize I can't trust in my wealth or um, maybe they trusted in their wealth and the stock market crashed or something. I like think that. of, it doesn't seem like it was 24 that long ago, but 9-11, yeah. you know, it seemed like the country came together then. Yeah. It was... The churches, yeah, there was people in prayer in churches. There was a, a few weeks in which, and then people right. slowly went, you know, they come back to their but, old, old ways. But then I think of something like really recent, the pandemic. Everybody was isolated and it was not. You were, promote, you were encouraged or by law mm -hmm. uh, prohibited from gathering. I think, groups. though they're very different, both affected the country, well, the world, mm -hmm. and they were very, very different. Yeah. And, different and, outcomes. And the, and the re reaction to them. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is what's coming. There will be people that are turning to the Lord. They'll put away their uh, Asherah poles, their idols, and so, mm -hmm. stuff that they had trusted in. Um, and then in verse 9, in that day, their strong cities, which they left because of the Israelites, will uh, be like places abandoned to thickets and undergrowth. So kind of abandoned cities, the they may refer to the Canaanites, which were displaced from their cities when the Israelites came mm. in. Um, and all will be desolation. And the reason for this is verse 10 and following. You've forgotten God, your Savior your rock, your fortress. Um, though you sit out your finest plants and do mm -hmm. all this thing, when it comes time for the harvest, yeah. it's, uh, there won't be anything. Right. They're, they're, so it's kind of like um, if we make all these plans ourselves apart from the Lord, they will come to nothing. In other words, it looks good, right? Mm -hmm. So they had their... Finest plants, verse 10, imported vines, they set them out, you make them grow, you plant them, they bring to bud, yet the harvest will be nothing. And that's kind of our life. So you, you can go down a path and it can all look good. Mm -hmm. It can all look shiny. Everything looks great and fantastic. 
you got the big house and the fancy cars and and all everything that, uh, that the world has to offer mm-hmm. but then your life will be mm-hmm. um, commanded of you by the Lord and what are you left with um, you know so many people that um, have the pursued that those things in their life and even in this lifetime before their death they're very lonely yeah they have nothing what's the fruit what is what is it at the time of the harvest there's there's nothing mm-hmm. so that's kind of what i take out of that is you know we can My, look good. Oh, go ahead i was going to say um it's a little off topic but happiness is worldly i heard this the other day mm-hmm. and it fluctuates yeah. like the things are going well you're good and I, joy is very different because your life still is not ah everything's great but you have an inner peace in you that I trust yeah. Yeah. we're gonna I'm gonna come out of this somehow so very no, different nobody can take that away right I mean it, the other stuff can come and go as it shows how tenuous all of this other stuff is um, and then it's just the God is it's you almost hear like a sadness in this verse 12 oh the raging of many mm-hmm. nations they rage like the raging sea oh the uproar of the peoples they roar like the roaring of the great waters and it's kind of like why are you doing this people mm-hmm. why are you doing this um and so all of this you know we, we cause so much trouble ourselves and just driven away then it's just like driven before the wind like chaff on the hills like tumbleweed before the gale um and all those things that people had been pursuing and raging just pouring their lives into is gone you know like what what are we what are we here for i, I think that's what it gets to mm. to like why are we on this earth for this short time and if people think we're on this earth to, I, just to accumulate things and get some stuff, it's all gone. I mean, it's a meaningless in, mm-hmm. in the end. Um, it, it's not that we can't enjoy things, the things of creation, mm-hmm. but put it in perspective. That God, God is your maker. He is the one who's created you. He is the one you're going to stand before when you take your last breath in this earth. And to be prepared for eternity. You're made for eternity, not for this short period of time that we're on this this earth here mm. and keep those things in perspective i don't know anything else on on that section no nope. i think okay. that's covered it all right so we're moving on this to the kush kush uh um, is down in africa uh a little bit south of egypt but not as far southeast as modern day ethiopia sometimes it's translated as ethiopia mm. uh so kind of picture that it's in Africa Um, tall people smooth skin you know it's beautiful there you know different parts of Africa have Mm -hmm. have different skin colors Mm -hmm. it is um, and there is you know kind of a you know like a smooth skin there is a tall smooth skin it's it's a very beautiful Mm -hmm. uh, skin that skin type Mm -hmm. that they have Mm -hmm. Um, so it even kind of says this in the scripture here um, that's what they're, that's kind of the way they look. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's I know, it. I was thinking that too. Yeah. And, um, you know, even seeing, you know, modern day t- today, you can, you can, if I was more aware, you could see different f- people from different parts of Africa. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Africans know, oh, that person comes from that region mm-hmm. of Africa. This person, and we in our ignorance are like, well, that's just, an, mm-hmm. you know, an yeah. African, right? Yeah. In there. So, um, anyway, tall, smooth-skinned people, and they had uh, actually taken over parts of Egypt, uh, and I think it was in 715. A Cushite. It's yeah, a Cushite named Shabako. Uh, he was uh, so gained control of Egypt and founded the 25th dynasty in 715 BC. So all this is happening when the Assyrians are rising to power. Um, and verse three, all you people of the world, you who live on the earth. And that's uh, kind of a, a picture of everybody arrayed against J- Jerusalem. 
donations of the world against Zion, against God, really, mm -hmm. essentially against God and his people. Um, this is what the Lord says to me, um, verse 4, I will remain quiet and look from on my dwelling place. So he's observing all this mm -hmm. <laughs> in there. Uh, but he's not, and eventually he will act. Before the harvest, when the blossom is gone, the flower becomes a ripening grape, he will cut off the shoots, pruning knives, and cut down and take away the spreading branches. They will be left to the mountain, birds of prey. So God is observing this, and it, at the right time, he will act. Mm -hmm. um, and here's kind of an interesting thing in verse 7. At that time, gifts will be brought to the Lord Almighty. And one thing I, I came to my mind, although this probably isn't, this, obviously this isn't the near-term um, uh, fulfillment of this prophecy, but a longer-term fulfillment, I think, of the prophecy is uh, the description in the book of Acts of Philip's and the, Philip and the mm. Ethiopian. And the Ethiopian had come to Jerusalem to worship. And then he's reading Isaiah. Yeah. He's eating Isaiah 53, Isaiah chapter 53, and Philip comes alongside of him and explains the gospel to him, explains the good news found in Jesus to him, and he he comes to faith in Christ and is baptized right there. So that's a pretty pretty cool thing. So yeah, and then doesn't Philip just like he disappears? disappears. He just goes on. And that's it. It's like <laughs> the, that was not by chance. The holy that was totally by design. There. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how great it'd be. Like, you just happen to be... The guy, the Ethiopian was... Um, what was he? I think he was the treasurer for Candace. Yeah, he was The princess Candace. Important. So he's like, he's a pretty important person, and he's riding on a, I don't know, chariot or mm -hmm. horse-drawn thing. Philip's kind of jogging alongside of him. And, he's, and, and he happens to be reading Isaiah yeah. chapter 53. So pretty, pretty cool. So... He had come to worship the living God, the true mm -hmm. and the living God, and God provided for him to come to know mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so the gifts will be brought, and, and the ultimate gift that comes from God is his one and only son. That's the one. So that's what we remember during this season of Lent, uh, the ultimate gift, and who we need to trust in at all times, who is our rock, who is our fortress, is Jesus. Mm -hmm the one who has come. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know if you have anything else to say from No, this. I don't, but there was, I feel like there was, when we first started, when we were talking about this earlier, I was like, eh, I don't know if there's a lot in here. There is more in here than I thought originally. Yeah. I mean, God is always, God, even when he's in judgment, it's, it's just over and over again. He leaves a remnant. He leaves a remnant. Yeah. He doesn't leave us desolate. He leaves hope. Yeah. There's always hope. There's hope. As mm -hmm. we turn to him, our rock and our fortress. Yeah. All right, can you pray for us? Sure. Oh, dear Lord, thank you for this new week that we have, and I just pray that we would heed these words and always have hope. Uh, we would always listen to you. We would always be guided by you, Lord Jesus, and that each and every time that we make a decision or, or do something, that we would, we would seek you first. Mm -hmm. And I just pray that you would lead us this week and lead everyone through this. And I just want to thank you for each and every breath you give us. In your glorious name, amen. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. Blessings to you all.